Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. You don't sound excited. You don't look like you are happy. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. There is a joy in the house of God. There is a blessing in the house of God. I was glad. I wasn't sad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. I was sad before, but when they told me, let us go into the house of God, I became excited. I became happy because you cannot come into the house of God and leave the same. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Look at somebody and tell that person, get excited. Because right here, God will meet you. I can't hear you talking. Look at somebody, shut the person up. Ask the person, are you awake or you are sleeping? Ay, 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 ay. Come on, shake the person now. Tell the person, it is time to be awake. It's time. To... Ay, da, 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 da. I feel the Holy Ghost already. I feel the power of God already. Once you come into his presence, all the burdens and the troubles and the tribulation is over. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, let us go, let us go, let us go into the house of God. I can see everything turning around for my good. I can see everything turning around for your good. It doesn't matter what the doctors told you. It doesn't matter what the stock exchange. I, 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 I want to tell somebody, God is turning it around. Somebody shout, he's turning it around. It's always 360 degrees. Psalm 126 verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. He said we were like them that dream. It felt like a dream. But it was actually happening. God is about to turn your impossible situations to possibility. What they told you couldn't happen. What you felt couldn't happen. God will do it. It shall be the doing of the Lord and it will be marvelous before our eyes. Somebody shout and believe. We are secured. We are safe in him. So regardless of what you felt through the night, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the news you heard, regardless of what you feel in your body, the psalm said, once they told me it is time to go to the house of God, he said, I got excited. I got happy because I know once I go into his house, I will encounter his power. I will encounter his glory. I will encounter victory. Welcome to the victory arena. Welcome to the victory arena. Welcome to the healing arena. Come, welcome to the restoration arena. Welcome, welcome to the arena of change. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ay, 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 ay. As, as you are dancing and celebrating, bad things are disappearing. Pain is disappearing. Disappointments are disappearing by the power of God. Oh, yeah, da, 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 this is the week. This is the week. This is the week. This is the week of victory. This is the week. This is the week of help. This is the week. This is the week of restoration. This is the week. This is the week. This is it. This is it. Hallelujah. Tell someone this is it. Thank you, Jesus. I see testimony. I see testimony. I see testimony. I hear your laughter. Is that not a cause? Is that not a reason? 
Weeping may endure, but it's just for a night. Weeping may endure, but it's just for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Healing comes in the morning. Deliverance comes in the morning. Restoration comes in the morning. Weeping may endure, but it's just for a night. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Romans 16, 20. Romans 16, 20. Romans 16, 20. Project it quickly. It says, the Lord. It said, the God of peace. Somebody shout, God of peace. The word peace from the Hebrew is shalom. Shalom means to be wealthy, to be healthy, to be whole, and to be prosperous. Tell somebody shalom. And look at the person next to you and say shalom, shalom. It means to be wealthy. It means to be whole. It means to be prosperous. It means nothing broken, nothing missing. It means to be highly favored. Is somebody hearing me? And he said, and the God of peace will crush. If you see me this week walking like this, I haven't lost my mind. I'm crashing the devil under my feet because the Bible said, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. God will crush the devil under your feet. Somebody shout his crash. Amen. Please be seated and sit on the neck of your enemies. Cross your leg if you can. Because the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Look at somebody tell the person, you are very honored and privileged to be sitting by my side. Are you aware that I'm highly blessed and anointed that I am the latest morning near in town. Ask the person, do you know what a morning near is? A morning near is more than a billionaire. A morning near is more than a millionaire. If you are a billionaire, it can be quantified. If you are a millionaire, it can be quantified. If you are a trillion, you can be, it can be quantified. If you are a millionaire, it cannot be quantified. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Millionaire, millionaire, millionaire. <laughs> Unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or can imagine. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. Somebody shout, it's my season to be blessed. Amen. All right. So we have some um, few guests in our midst we want to acknowledge and appreciate. Mary A. Crawford. Where are you? Mary? 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 Where's Mary? Oh, God bless you, Mary. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And then we have Sherilyn Jean. Sherilyn Jean. Uh, where are you? All right. God bless you. Yes, she just drove in. We are glad you drove in and you came. Then we have uh, a Ghanaian media, media personality uh, visiting from the UK. It's a Ghanaian base in UK. Oh, you are based both in UK and in Ghana. All right. Uh, he's and he said uh, he's a blogger on uh, media. I heard of him and I said, "Wow, I would love to meet him." Meet him, and he's here today. He's called Inkoswahini. Inkoswahini. That's a beautiful name. 
uh, uh, that means that a king of progress, the king of progress. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. We are grateful that you are here today. And tell somebody, I'm also here. And, and I'm glad I came. Amen. And we are appreciative to God for each and every one of you. Uh, today is our Pink Sunday. Uh, we do uh, pray for all those women who are dealing with breast cancer one way or the other. And our prayer is that God will heal them. And then during the Pink Sunday service, we'll receive a special offering to give to us the charities that support that uh, project and those that research into uh, cancer and breast cancer and all of that. Uh, every year we do do that. And so right after uh, uh, the sermon, we're going to give you an opportunity to give to us that worthy cause so that uh, we can be able to support uh, those who are going through that difficulty. And here is the revelation. You know, in Psalm 41, uh, it makes us to understand that when you help the needy, you will never be, uh, be in need. If you are someone praying for the sick, you don't get sick. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible said that he will help you in the time of difficulty. Give me some 41. Give me some 41. Uh, some 41 from verse 1. Uh, it said, the Lord preserves him and keeps him alive. Um, Yes, verse 1 says, Blessed is he who considers the poor. Hmm? The poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. When you help the poor, when you help people who are in, in difficulty and challenges, God delivers you when you are in trouble. Then he said, The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not, he said, he, he, you will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed if you help the needy and the poor. Well, today I'm going to continue my message from where I stopped. We are looking at what is the blessing of, what are the blessing or the benefit of focusing on Jesus. When I focus on Jesus, what do I get? Amen. Now you have to understand that if you are serving God and those who are not serving God seems to be, be blessed more than you, then you should check your connectivity to God. Amen. Because there is a blessing that comes to serving God. When you serve God, God blesses. When you seek God, God blesses. Amen. Uh, uh, the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 6, all right? He said, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder. When you serve God, God rewards you. When you believe in God, there is a reward. There is always a reward for serving God. Please, <laughs> I don't just serve God because I love God. I serve God because it comes with a reward. Oh, Jesus. And every time I'm serving God, that is why, you see, it, it, people who do what they love always get blessed. Don't be a nurse if you don't love people and you don't like taking care of, uh, like, sick people. Do you understand? Because it's not fun to be sick. And when people are sick, they need pampering. They don't need a mean person. Do you understand? So, we don't need somebody who is in nursing because nursing pays. When you're a nurse, you make good money. If you're a doctor, you make good money. So, if the only reason why you are a doctor is because you want to make good money, you're in the wrong profession. You must love people. And you must, you must love... So, I like nurses who are very nice when you go to the ER. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those kind of nurses, they are the best. You don't want that kind of nurse that lift your hand. <laughs> let, let me put you in the, let me look at your temperature. You, then they poke that thing, you know. What is this? So when you love God and you are serving God 
and God is rewarding you for loving him, it is a bonus. There is a blessing in focusing on Jesus, in loving Jesus, and serving Jesus. We've been looking at focusing on Jesus all throughout this month. And we've looked at what it means to focus on Jesus. Today I want us to look at what is the blessing? What are the covenant blessings of focusing on Jesus? And then next week, which is the last Sunday, we'll look at how do I focus on Jesus? My friend, focusing on Jesus is hard work. Because there are so many things competing for our focus and our attention. There are so many things. Everything is trying to pull you here, pull you there, and you have to be resilient and determined and say, no, I'm not going to allow myself to be distracted. I'm going to stay focused. So what are the covenant blessings of um, focusing on Jesus? Number one, when you focus on Jesus, you will become radiant in life. You glow. You shine in life. When you see somebody shining in the kingdom, that is someone who is focused on Jesus. Huh? Psalm 34 verse 5. Psalm 34 verse 5. Psalm 34 verse 5. Everybody look at that and let's read. One go. Everybody, one go. They look. All right. So let's, let's, let's paraphrase it. They focus on on Jesus or they focus on him and they were what? Radiant. Can I get an amplified version of that? Can I get an amplified version that will give us more adjectives and give us more uh, other uh, this thing that makes it easier? They look unto him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Is that an amplify? I want the amplify. Let's see if, if it breaks it down a little bit more. Is that it? They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were never blush in shame or confusion. Uh, see if you get any other version that says it differently. But here is the point. Here is the point. If you focus on Jesus, one of the blessings you get is you begin to radiate. You glow. You shine. Which means that darkness can cover you. Satan cannot sit on your glory. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a benefit in focusing on Jesus, looking to Jesus, trusting Jesus. When you look to Jesus, shame cannot be your portion. Amen? Tell somebody, focus on Jesus. Listen, when you focus on Jesus, you cannot suffer shame. No weapon fashion against you shall prosper. The enemy cannot stop you. They can pull you down. Just focus on Jesus. Those who look to him for help. I like that. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. When we see you all the time, your face is glowing with joy. When we see you, you see, you can focus on Jesus and depression will come and abide. As of depression, it will come to everybody. It comes to everybody. But it's your, it's your right to decide whether you are going to welcome it to stay or you are going to tell it, no, you don't belong here. When you are focused on Jesus, it says, when, when depression comes, it can't find a way because you are too much radiating in God's glory. The presence of God is on you that all that you exude or exude out of you is the joy. It's the joy of God. It's the joy of God. It's the presence of God. It's the glory of God. I pray to God of heaven that his presence will fill your life to the point where no weapon fashioned against you or form against you will prosper. Those who look to him, those who focus, huh? he said, for help will be radiant with joy. You know, Paul said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. Uh -huh. He was writing, he was writing to the church of Philippians and he told them, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. Now, can you imagine somebody in jail encouraging people outside jail? Usually, it's those who are outside who goes to organize themselves. They go with uh, 
hamper bag. There is orange in it. There is a <laughs> fruit in it. And he said, well, we bring you a um, home-cooked meal. And then while she are visiting, and they say, you'll be okay, eh? You'll be fine. You'll soon be out, okay? God is with you. We are praying for you. But not Paul. Paul was rather encouraging the people who were outside. Why? Because even in jail, he was focused on Jesus. Give me Philippians 4, verse 4. Philippians 4, verse 4. <laughs> you have to come to that place, people of God, where your focus is on Jesus. Once I focus on Jesus, guess what? My problems diminishes. I don't see my problems. Rejoice in the Lord. How many times? How many, how many is always? <laughs> All the time, right? Yes. So when I focus on Jesus, I radiate with joy. There is joy. And the same scripture is telling us that rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I bore the prisoner. I am telling you, rejoice. You see, rejoicing is a choice. Is a what? Yes. Because nobody is going to make you happy. You choose to make yourself happy. Tell somebody happy yourself. Say, I decide, I choose to rejoice in the Lord. Now, you don't rejoice because you don't have a problem. Because there are some people that think that, well, I can only rejoice if I have no problem. I told you somebody who went to Kennedy again and said that, please pray for me. What about so I won't have a problem again? And then he stretched his hand and he said, God, kill him. He said, no, I don't want to die. He said, that's the only way. You're not going to have a problem. The day you die, problem over. Now, there is no way in the scriptures we have ever been told you will not have problem. The Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous. How many? Many are the afflictions of the wicked. Of the ungodly. Of the unsaved. The righteous. But, someone say but. So, you see, the issue is not the problems. The issue is not the affliction. The issue is not the challenges. It said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. That's how testimony comes. That's how we have breakthroughs. That's why we have triumph that's why we have victories because when it brings the challenge and the challenge doesn't destroy you and you are still standing and everybody know what you've been through everybody know what has happened and you are still standing that is a testimony that number one your God is who he says he is and God is keeping his word in your life and so ladies and gentlemen as we focus on Jesus the benefit is that we begin to radiate with joy. God always sustains us. God always keeps us. And no weapon that the enemy brings up against us succeeds. That's number one. When we are focused on Jesus, we benefit to ensure that we radiate with joy. Number two, you will not suffer shame. As you focus on Jesus, you will not suffer shame. Now, shame is a garment that Satan is looking to impose on people. Shame is a what? It's a garment. He's looking for people to impose it on them, put it on them. Now, shame is what Satan wants to put on each and every one of us so he can go and tell everybody, look at what believing in God does to you. It's a mocking spirit that tells you that you put your faith in God and see what has happened to you. It is an opposition to our faith in God. Watch this. Satan is not really against you. He's against the God who has called you, who has saved you, who has delivered you, whom you are working with. So he's trying to make discredit God to you. So every time you are believing God for healing, 
He's trying to ensure that the healing doesn't take place. So you will come to a place and get discouraged and say that, oh, believing in God doesn't work. That's what shame is all about. Shame wants to ensure that the promises of God, that God says belongs to you, doesn't happen. But as long as you hold on to God, you will not suffer shame. Somebody say, I will not suffer shame. So the Bible said they look to him. They look to him. They focus on him. Let's go back to the same scripture. Psalm 34 verse 5. They were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Their faces were not ashamed. Their faces were not ashamed. They focused on Jesus. And their faces were not ashamed. Their faces were not ashamed. There's a scripture in Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, verse 25, 26, and 27. It says, I will restore to you the years that the swami locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the, and the chewing locusts. These are all demonic spirits that invade our life to rob us what belongs to us. My great army, which I send among you, it says, you shall eat in plenty. And be what? Tell somebody, I'm coming to your house Thanksgiving. I'm inviting myself to your house. Are they smiling? If they are not smiling, then it means that you are not welcome. If they smile, it means that <laughs> self-invitation accepted. Are you still here? Let's try this again. Look at somebody and tell the person, I'm coming to your house for Thanksgiving. Are they smiling? Somebody has closed their eyes. Somebody has folded in their arm like this. They are like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I don't think I can have you in my house. He said, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. I like this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You see, when you have a miracle, nobody needs to pump you to praise God. When your breakthrough comes, you see, every time you come to church and you see somebody shouting and yelling and jumping whilst the praise is going on, maybe they had a good week. They had some testimony, some money has come, some testimony has come, some breakthrough has come, and so they are praising God. Usually, when people come and they are dejected, discouraged, morose, it means that they hadn't had a fruitful week and some things have not gone as they expected. But this scripture says uh, God is going to visit us as we look to him. God is going to do some amazing things. And he said you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. I feel like praising the name of the Lord my God. I feel like praising the name of the Lord my God. You see, some of you, that's your problem. Because if I'm focused on him, I'm not waiting to see my miracle before I give him praise. If I'm focused on him and I know who he is and I know he's not a man that he should lie, then I'm going to give him praise before I see my testimony. Oh, Jesus, you are waiting for the money to show up in the account before you give him praise. You are waiting for the proposal before you give him praise. You are waiting for the raise before you give him praise. But ladies and gentlemen, as for me and my house, as for me and our grace place, as for me, we choose. We choose to give him praise. We choose to give him praise before. I'm not waiting for the full revival. I'm not waiting for the house to be packed before I give him praise. Even now, I still praise him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even now, I still thank him. Even now, 
you are waiting to close on the house before you give him praise. You are waiting to go back to the doctor to tell you that yes, no more cancer, no more before you give him praise. But I choose to praise him. Somebody shout, I choose to praise him. Even now, even now, even now, even now, even now, in the midst of the storm, I still praise him. In the midst of your uncertainty, I still praise him. Somebody shout, I choose to praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has past things, who has dealt wondrously with you. Who has dealt wondrously. Look at this, look at this. Everybody look at me. Say with me. Darkness can never prevail over light. Say, I am in the light. Therefore, no darkness and nothing that represents darkness can prevail over my life in the name of Jesus. Do you believe it? Give the Lord a shout of praise. And be seated if you can. Then watch this. And watch this now. He said, and my people shall never. This is why I like, I like the, you know, all of you who use the mobile gadget and stuff. Sometimes this thing doesn't give you all. Of, see, if you have the ability to underline, underline the word never. Never means never. That means it cannot be that any day that you as a child of God focusing on Jesus will ever know or suffer shame. It's all in perspective. You see sometimes we allow the enemy to steal our focus from Christ and we focus on our problems and our issues. I have said throughout this series that the problem is not the problem that shows up. It's how you process the problem that shows up. Because as long as my focus is on Jesus and what Jesus has promised me and of what Jesus has said, then guess what? There is absolutely nothing that the enemy can do that can derail my faith. I just must hold on to the word of God. He said, and my people, and this is God talking, and God can lie. God said, you my daughter, you my son, you my church, you grace place and my people shall never be put to shame. Which means that there is something trying to put you to shame. There is a force that is trying to put the garment of shame on your life. But Jesus said, as long as you are looking to me, as long as your faith is in me, as long as your hand is in my hands and I'm the one guiding you. I'm the one leading you. You shall, will not suffer shame. Somebody shall no shame. Somebody shall no shame. Come on, somebody declare no shame. Declare no shame. Shall no shame. And watch this. Every time God repeats a thing almost verbatim, word to word, that is a double emphasis to assure you that I'm committed to what you are reading. I'm committed to what I'm saying. I'm committed to what I'm promising you. So look at verse 27. Then you shall know. Tell somebody, I know. Shout, I believe. Shout, I know. Shout, I believe. 
See, you got to come to the place where you know that you know, that he knows, that you know, that he knows, that I'm a child of God and I'm secured in Christ. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of grace place. That I am in the midst. You want to put your family name there. I am in the midst of the crappies. I am in the midst. You got to put your name there. That God is with us. And because God is with us. Just like he was with the disciples. And the storm came. And they did not sink. God said I'm with you. That Thing that doctors told you won't sink you. It won't destroy your life. It won't waste you. Your business won't sink. I, I, I see in the realm of the spirit that God said, I will hold you with my righteous hand and no storm, no wind, no force, no power can be able to pull you out of the hands of God. Somebody shout, I believe. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God. And there is no other. Did you hear that? See, somebody asked me recently, what more do I need to do? I said, nothing more. Just hold on to what he has said. See, we, we live ourselves in a generation where people are always looking for something new. Go back and read your Bible. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon tells us there is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. Whatever is going to come has already come before. You ladies, you know this. Look at trends. Clothing trends. Hmm? Recently I heard, Yuri was telling me, that she, she's doing fashion. So she was telling me that uh, the platform, you know what they call platform? They are reintroducing it. They said next summer, that's what is coming up. Platform. That means that short people are going to become tall. And tall people are going to become taller. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, 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 no malice intended. I'm saying that they said platform is going to be high. So you are walking. It's like you are walking. Yeah, platform. Anybody remember bell bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's coming back. It's, it's coming. It's here. I hear it's here. Tell somebody there's nothing new. Under the sun. So for those of us who are always craving, looking for something new. What's the new? What is new? What is new? What is new? What is new? And so we get distracted, always looking. And yet God says, stay right here. And hold on to what I told you. And then, oh, what is the latest this? What is the latest that? Let's the, that's how people get into deception. And Satan is keep reinventing himself. Translating himself like an apostle of God. Like an angel of God. But ladies and gentlemen, stay focused. Stay resilient. Hold on to the word of God. Please. There is, you don't need nothing more than prayer and the word of God and living in consecration. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Do I need something else? Uh, maybe somebody called. I was in the office this weekend. Somebody called me and said, do you sell holy water? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? So that means that some people say holy water. Yeah. Do you sell holy water? I said, no. Boom. Say thank you. They are always looking for something new. What is more powerful than the word of God? What's more powerful than praying and talking to God directly? Aren't you happy that I have access to God? The Bible calls us priest. That I can talk to God in the name of Jesus. And just like, uh, just like anybody can talk to him, me too, I can talk to God. I have direct access to God. Amen. I don't need nobody to talk to God for me. I can talk to God myself. Tell somebody I can talk to God myself. And God responds and God answers. And, and can I say this to you? 
your bishop's prayer is no more powerful than your prayer. <laughs> the prophet's prayer is no more powerful than your prayer. Just as you are, huh, you have access to God, the same privilege that prophet also has. So if God can hear, you believe that God can hear the prayer of the prophet, believe that he can hear your prayer too. Amen? And just believe in the prayer you are praying. So watch this. He said, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And I am the Lord your God. And there is not another. My people. Someone say, my people. Say, I am the people of God. We are the people of God. He said, and my people shall never, again, underline the word never, be put to shame. When we focus on Jesus, shame is never our portion. When we focus on Jesus, one of the covenant blessings we enjoy is that shame is eradicated from our lives and we don't suffer shame. Therefore, anything that looks like shame, that Satan is trying to impose on you, you have your authority in the name of Jesus to rebuke it and say, no, this thing does not belong in my life. You cannot put this shame on me. This garment of shame, I reject it and I refuse it. That is where we do warfare. Satan is trying to harass your family. Satan is trying to mess up with your health. Satan is trying to mess up with your finances. Satan is trying to mess up with your marriage. Get up and pray and tell that devil, uh, no, this shame will not enter my family. This shame will not enter my life. I resist the shame. I rebuke the shame. I bind the shame. You speak in the name of Jesus and say, no, I'm a child of God and I am not permitted to suffer or experience shame in my life. Let me try to wrap it up. Number three, what are the blessings? When you look to God, you don't lack any good thing. Tell somebody, I'm entitled to the good things of life. Please look at me. I believe God for all the good things of life. If he comes to me, don't be jealous. You too have access to the same thing. Did you hear what I said? Believe God. You see, faith is a blank check, check handed to us. Write the amount you want on it. If you write $10, that's what you get. If you write a billion, that's what you're going to get. So what are you putting in it? What are you putting there? Now faith is the substance of things over. The evidence of things not seen. Believe God. And then my scripture makes me to understand. Psalm 84, I believe the last two verse, it said, no good thing would he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Which means that I deserve every good thing of life. As long as I walk uprightly before God, I'm not walking in any kind of shady lifestyle. I'm not being covetous. I'm not, you know, a lot of people you see who are living, they are scammers and thieves. Just before you start giving yourself high blood pressure and doing, I want to be like that one, I want to be like, check and find out where they are getting what they are getting from. Are you here? We don't know what you are doing. So why are you getting what you are getting from? And you are sitting down there. And then you are looking at them. And then you are stressing. My friend, first of all, be content with what you have now. Because if I can't thank him for where I am now, he won't move me to where I want to be. And there are too many of us, we are not content where we are, and we are murmuring and complaining. Friday, I told you, most of us in our prayer corset, what we are calling prayer is actually murmuring. God, don't you see what I'm going through? Can't you see I'm suffering? Oh, God, when are you going to come through? And, and No, you are murmuring. Pray the scriptures back to God. God, you said, you will never leave me. 
nor forsake me. God, you said, I am the head and not the tail. God, you said, tell God what God told you. And what I know here is this. He said, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So I shall focus on Jesus. I will not lack no good thing. He said, good job, good. I'm asking you a question. He said, good job, good. Then God said, you deserve it. Happy marriage, is it good? He said, you deserve it. Excellent help, is it good? He said, you deserve it. Having a nice house, is it good? He said, you deserve it. So when I focus on God, one of the benefits is that I don't lack good things. And all throughout the scriptures, all the great patriarchs that walk with God, they were all blessed. They were all what? Blessed. Psalm 34 and 10. Psalm 34 and 10. He said, The young lions lack and suffer hunger. Please watch this. Young lions, and young lions usually don't hunger because their mother is always going out to look for a prey and to feed them. But the psalm is saying that if even the young lion, who usually, because of the love that the, the mother has for the young lion, make sure they are never starved, if even they hunger and they lack, but those who seek the Lord, those who are, say focus, who look to God, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any. Any means what? Any. Yeah. So watch this. This scripture alone tells you that I can have anything and everything that God says I'm entitled to. Don't you love God? So you see, when you are a kingdom person, I, I tell you the truth. I don't envy nobody. I don't envy nobody. In fact, when I see other people blessed, it gives me faith that, wow, they serve in the same Jesus as I serve. So if Jesus can do it for them, he can do it for me. So I focus on my walk with Jesus and then, ay, 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 ay. and number two, number two, see, see, there are sometimes you can have something. It may be good, but it may not be good for me. So, being jealous of what God is doing for her and in her life is foolishness. It's unwise that God has blessed her because of her faithfulness and her work with God. And God says that rewarding her, I'm going to give her what she deserves and what she requires. I'm also being faithful and God will give me something different. That is why I have to be happy for her. When I'm happy for her, when my time comes, she's also going to join me and we're happy and we are in the same kingdom. And guess what? The same God blessing us because her testimony is to the glory of Jesus. My testimony is also to the glory of Jesus. So let's stop being jealous and being angry. For why has God blessed him? Why has God blessed her? If you have anything to say, go say it to Jesus and leave me alone. It's not my fault that I'm blessed. But he said, no good thing. No good thing. See, I want you to open up your mind. Anything that can be called good. And here is even a beauty. In Genesis chapter 1, when in creation, the Bible said, and everything that God created, God saw that it was good. Everything God created, God saw, and it was good. Which means that anything that was not in the similitude of good, God did not create. So in the kingdom, we are entitled to the good things of life. And it's part of the gospel. 
And so when we share the gospel and we teach the gospel, this thing is a package that God gives us. You must, just like you receive salvation, you must also receive the good things of life. As long as I'm focused on Jesus, I'm entitled to the good things of life and I'm not supposed to lack any good thing. Are you hearing me? So when I'm praying, I know what I'm entitled to. So when I wake up in the morning, today, I know my day is going to be full of good things. I'm not anticipating and expecting no bad thing. Only good news, no bad news. Only breakthroughs, no b- breakdowns. You confess these things, you declare these things by faith. And as you go, ladies and gentlemen, there are going to be assigned devils to distract you, to change your focus, to change your confession. But hold on to your confession. Do not allow nothing to push you to start changing your confession. Well, I thought today was going to be a good day. How come the first person I met, the first client that came, look at how they are talking to me. Oh my God, I don't know how my day is going to go. They are pushing you to change your confession. Don't change your confession. Stick with your confession and shake it off and keep pushing on. Sometimes that's how we lose our focus. Amen? Tell somebody, maintain your confession. Maintain your focus. So number three, covenant blessing or benefit of focusing on Jesus is that you will not lack no good thing. Number four, you will be delivered from all troubles. You'll be delivered from what? Financial trouble, health trouble. Trouble, 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 trouble. Anything called trouble, he said, you will be delivered. Hmm? You will be delivered. You will be delivered. Here, troubles will come. Tell somebody, troubles will come. Whether you pray or you don't pray, troubles will come. You fast, you don't fast, troubles will come. Now, can I ask you a question? After a 40 days prayer and fasting, what are you expecting to see? Okay, blessings. That's the answer. But who showed up to meet Jesus? In Luke chapter 4, after 40 days of prayer and fasting. Now, Moses stayed in the presence of God 40 days and 40 nights. When he showed up, huh? what did he meet? Did he come and meet people worshiping God, serving God? They have built a golden calf. Uh And they were worshiping the devil after 40 days and 40 nights. Please hear this. Trouble will come to everybody. Holy, righteous, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost tongue talking, demon chasing, they will come. But when they come, the Bible said, God will deliver you from them all. Psalm 34, verse 6, please. Psalm 34, verse 6. Look at what the scripture says. So trouble comes to everybody, but God promises us when the trouble comes, God will deliver us from them all. Watch this. He said, this poor man cried out. This is David talking. And the Lord heard him. Tell somebody, when you pray, When you cry, God will hear you and God will deliver you and save you from your troubles. He said, this poor man cried out and the Lord had him and saved him out of, no, one of them, two of them, three of them, only the one. He delivered them from all of them. Tell somebody, chillax. God will deliver you from all your troubles. Say, God will deliver you from all your troubles. Say, God will deliver me from all my troubles. Say, I prophesy to myself that today and the rest of the year and beyond, God will deliver me, will deliver my family, will deliver my children from all my troubles. Say, God will deliver me from all my troubles. Say, God 
will deliver me. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What is your trouble? What is your trouble? What is your trouble? Ask somebody, what is your trouble? Huh? What is your trouble? Put you. What's your trouble? Gracia, what's your trouble? What's your trouble? See, if only I can make my mind stay on him. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. If I can make my mind stay on him, not the problem. If I can make my mind stay on him, huh? Quickly, Ninabari, 20, uh, um, Isaiah 26 and 3. Huh? Yeah, verse 2. Yeah, no, no, that's it, that's it. You will keep him. Say, God will keep him. Say that him is me. Yeah. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind. Huh? The greatest place of warfare is the mind. If Satan can capture your mind, you are done. Lord, help me to keep my mind on you. That's what the Bible prescribes to us what we should think about, when we should think about. Amen? Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble. He said, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, Think, think on these things. Think on this man. That's, that's why, you see, last week I told you that one of the areas that you, what it means to focus on Jesus is to have a mind shift. A mind shift. You can't keep thinking the same way and expect to have a spectacular life. Stinking thinking will produce a stinking life. So think well. Healthy mind, healthy life. Your mind. Your mind. So watch what you are feeding. If you keep... It gets to a point, I say, no, I don't want to listen to the news. Because there's no good news on the news. It's heart-wrenching. You know, this past week, a father murdered her, his own daughter and a girlfriend. But you see, if you're a student of the Bible, if you're a student of the Bible, Paul said this. He said, in the last days, men shall be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. That they're going to love themselves so much that they will, they will, they, in that same portion of scripture, he said, they are going to be truce breakers, truce breakers, covenant breakers, agreement breakers. They can make an agreement with you and just walk. When they get there, they change their mind and the same covenant. That's why a man can marry you today eh? and walk under and say, I changed my mind. A woman can marry you today and walk and get there and say, I changed my mind. You better pray. So if you see somebody who has been married for a long time and still married, you should be thanking God for their lives. Are you still here? Or you have gone home? You, you want quiet on me? <laughs> Say, God will deliver me from all my troubles. And then the last one, he, God sets his eyes on you as you focus on him. One of the benefits of focusing on God, once you make God your focus, God makes you his focus. You become the apple of his eye. And anything that dares you, God will dare that thing. Anything that attempts you, God will attempt that person. Anything that try you, God will try that person. As I set my focus on Jesus, Jesus also focuses on me. I shall look to God, God looks to me. His eyes is on us. His eyes is on us. 
God is watching over us. God is what. See, I tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't care about this building. If God's focus is on this building right now, it's because you and I are in this building. That car you drive, God really doesn't care about that car. The only reason why that car is protected every time you sit in it is because you are in it. And God has not want no harm. God has not want no danger to befall you. When you sit in that house and you are sleeping on that bed, God's eyes is on you and he keeps his angels watch over you because you are in that house, because you are in that building, because you are in that office. That is why God is watching over you. That's why God is keeping his eyes on you. Stand on your feet. And lift up your two hands and begin to thank him that Lord I thank you that you love me that you keep your eyes on me that God you cause in my face my life to radiate with your glory ay, 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 ay. that your goodness is on me that I suffer no shame that because you love me, I lack no good pain. That because I'm focused on you, you deliver me from every evil and from every wickedness. Come on, thank him and thank him and give him praise. Thank him and give him praise. Thank him and give him praise and give him praise. Somebody worship the Lord and give him praise. Somebody thank him and give him praise. Somebody adore him and exalt him and magnify him. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you. We declare there is none like you. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of worship. Come on, somebody thank him. Thank you, Lord. 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 We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to put your hand on your chest. Now I pray that this week, we are left with 69 days and the year 2022 is over. I am praying for you that in this 96, I mean, 69 days remaining, you will see the goodness of God. You will see the glory of God. That God will help you that God will show up, that God will grant you the desires of your heart, that this week you will see the goodness of God in Jesus' name. Now, if you are here and you are not saved, you've not given your life to Jesus, you are not born again, please, I would like to pray with you to rededicate your life and connect your life to Jesus. You are watching. And you are not saved. You are not born again. Somebody invited you. And you want to give your life to Jesus. I would like to pray with you. I would like to pray with you. So if you are here, you are not saved. Raise your hand up. Raise your hand up. And you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. I want you to raise your hand so I can pray with you. So I can pray with you. All right. All right. Now, everybody, just raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you for saving me. Lord, keep my salvation and help me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.